Simple Machines Review. A simple machine is used to reduce the amount of force needed to do work by increasing the distance over which the force is applied. Remember that a simple machine can't reduce the amount of work that is done. It only allows us to do the same work with less force. An inclined plane, for example, can reduce the force by increasing the length of the ramp or by decreasing the height of the ramp. A lever can reduce the force by increasing the length of the effort arm or by moving the load closer to the fulcrum. Another way to say it is, we increase the distance the force is applied by moving the effort away from the fulcrum. A pulley can reduce the force by adding movable pulleys, thereby increasing the length of the rope. Remember, a fixed pulley only changes the direction of the force. It's the movable pulley that reduces the amount of force. Let's practice. Which pulley would require the least amount of force to lift the load? Provide evidence for your answer. Would it be the fixed pulley, the movable pulley, the block and tackle, or both the movable and the block and tackle? There are also other types of simple machines, including screws, gears, wedges, and wheel and axles. A wheel and axle consists of one or two circular wheels with a shaft running through the middle. An example is a steering wheel or a doorknob. A screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a nail or a cylinder. An example is a light bulb or a jar lid. Anything you have to screw on or off is a screw. A wedge is a simple machine that is made up of two inclined planes forming a triangular shape. Examples are a knife and a doorstop. Anything sharp is usually a wedge. A gear is just a wheel with teeth. To do any work with a gear, you need to have at least two gears with their teeth fitting into each other. Gears can be found in cars and bikes. Two or more simple machines can come together to create a compound or complex machine. Example, this pair of scissors is made of two levers and two wedges. Remember, wedges are also inclined planes. Mechanical efficiency is how well a machine converts input energy, work, and power to output energy, work, and power. Unfortunately, most machines are not totally efficient. Efficiency is based on a comparison of the amount of energy put into a machine and the amount of energy it supplies. Cars are only about 25% efficient because a great deal of the energy supplied as fuel is wasted as heat. No machine is 100% efficient because friction is produced by all machines. Friction is a force that opposes motion. It wastes energy in the form of heat and wear and tear. That's why oil and grease are used in machines with many moving parts. The oil or grease will help cut down on friction and help to improve performance and efficiency. How can we change the efficiency of a lever? Pause and discuss. You can change the efficiency of a lever by changing the shape or the size of the fulcrum and the bar. You can also change what the fulcrum and the bar are made of, the materials. How can we change the efficiency of a pulley? Pause and discuss. You can change the efficiency of a pulley by changing the type of rope or cable that you're using. Is there a wheel or not? And how well does that wheel spin? How can we change the efficiency of an inclined plane? Pause and discuss. You can change the efficiency of an inclined plane by changing the material the inclined plane is made of and the length of the ramp. Would you prefer to slide down a wooden slide or a plastic or metal slide? How can we increase the efficiency of a wedge? Pause and discuss. You can change the efficiency of a wedge by simply making it sharper. Consider the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Remember when Dorothy found him, he was all rusted up? What did she do to him to increase his efficiency? She oiled him up. So remember, with simple machines, in order to increase efficiency, we have to reduce friction, which is how heat is lost in the environment. When we're discussing efficiency, you may hear the term heat is lost to the environment. 
Well, the law of conservation of energy states that energy can't be created or destroyed. Therefore, it can't be lost either. So when you hear the term heat is lost to the environment, it just means that the energy you put in has been converted to heat, not lost.